Well, here we are. We are definitely at anchor. Um, we got side tied to this guy. It was kind of a mess. Um, when I pulled up to his boat, he had me side tie uh, with my bow to his stern. And with my long, long rudder, uh, which I think is probably like four feet under the boat. Uh, I snagged his anchor line. So I taught, we get tied up. We're not paying attention to which, which direction the boats are aimed, but, uh, we're sitting at this weird funky angle and the wind's blowing from the wrong direction. And it's because his anchor line was wrapped around my rudder. Uh, luckily it's a pretty strong rudder. Uh, but we had to take a anchor or a, a line hook and push it down off of the bottom of my, uh, my rudder. And I was worried that that was going to become a problem over time because, uh, I thought that it would eventually do it again, you know, because I hadn't really realized that I snagged it on the way up to his boat. But this is, uh his anchor line and uh, his boat, his little dinghy's floating back there. And uh, I took his dinghy over to the beach three or four hours ago. And there's a section right here that uh, was really, it was very level way out into the water. And I, I got off the boat there and sunk all the way up to the hip in the mud. Uh, my shorts got completely muddy. Uh, I had a heck of a time getting my slip-on uh, Merrill shoes out of the holes in the mud, but I, I succeeded. I had to wash my shorts off in a bucket of salt water just to get the, the, the mud off of them. This is kind of an example of what the stuff was, but uh, I got up this morning and uh, Atta the tide was so low that Atta couldn't come over from that marina to pick these guys up like he was supposed to. So, you know, because his boat was in the mud over there. Uh, we were in like a foot under my keel, so it was, you know, seven feet deep. And this guy who wanted, who was trying to convince me that I should, uh, sail with him all the way down to basically Monterey Bay, Santa Cruz area, uh, with no engine, because he killed the engine by pouring water from the cove into a hot, piping hot engine, and basically either cracked the head or the head gasket at least, but uh, the engine's now, you know, seized, and he wants me to go, you know, with all the things he did wrong on that trip, I don't want to sail down there, so he found somebody else to do that, but he has a doctor's appointment today, and then he has a second doctor's appointment tomorrow, and and it's not legal for him to leave this boat uh, hooked up, you know, or sitting it on anchor with nobody in it. So I motored over here yesterday just so that I can sit here tied up to his boat on his anchor, and uh, to be honest, I'm kind of bored. <laughs> I've been here for, well, they just left, by the way. They literally just left half an hour ago. Um, it's like 1230 in the afternoon, and he's got to get down to uh, his doctor's appointment like two hours, and it's a, almost a two-hour drive down there. So I don't know how that's going to work out for him. But uh, he gave me a check for working on the boat, you know, that he was proceeding to destroy. Uh, I can't take the the uh, check to the bank uh, because I'm sitting at anchor. Um, I'm going to see if I can deposit online, you know, like take a picture of it and have it transferred to him or to the bank account because I've seen a, a, a TV commercial about being able to do that. But it makes me nervous that, uh, you know, that he waited until I was here at anchor and he was out to actually hand me a check, um, knowing that I would not be able to take the check to the bank because, you know, I'm out here at anchor. So it's uh, definitely an interesting situation. I'm I'm not 100% comfortable with what we're with what's going on, 
but uh, the biggest thing is is that I'm just bored you know I'm gonna I just uh, got done cleaning those shorts and helping them get him and his girlfriend off of his boat uh, I didn't even know his girlfriend was here until I got here last night and uh, she got shuttled over by uh, Atta with his boat and uh, you know so at, oh, and then the, the Bay Police just came by. They just uh, stopped by here uh, about 20 minutes ago. Right after they pulled away, um, there was a boat sitting at anchor right off the beach over here. And uh, the Bay Police pulled up to them. And so I helped these guys get into Atta's boat uh, to head out and just stayed in the cockpit and waited until the police came over here. They were just checking to see if everybody was legal. And, uh, of course, you know, Todd is the is currently the kind of active um, harbor master. So, you know, Todd told him, oh, yeah, that guy's fine, you know, which is the, you know, because you're supposed to have a permit to be out here. And the permit is you just call them and say, hey, will you permit me to be there? <laughs> That's pretty much the whole the whole deal of a permit. Um, and of course, Todd's not going to tell him no. So what I might do is uh, take this little dinghy over to the beach with the dog and the bird, and uh, you know, go for a quick uh, run up and down the beach with the bird. Take my uh, water jug up to the the marina and the bathroom and. Uh, fill up my water jug with some fresh water because I, I have a tank full but I don't trust my tank it hasn't been cleaned in a long time you know I've, I've run a few gallons through it for washing dishes but uh, I have not uh, I've not consumed water out of that tank so I should have brought a bottle of water you know a big jug but I didn't so I'll just have to live on city water for a you know a couple days but they'll be back Thursday afternoon at around 3 or 4 in the afternoon. And so today's Tuesday. So I've got two days of uh, just sitting out here. And uh, so I'm probably going to study the... It was about the strangest thing. Okay, so I'm, I'm in there. I'm just starting to do a project in my boat. And uh, I realized that... When I look out the companionway, I'm looking over there, which uh, the wind is coming from over here, and my boat's oriented reverse to this guy's anchor line, which is right here, of course. And uh, so I climb out, because I almost thought that I'd un you know come off of his boat somehow, which didn't make any sense. But uh, we were literally right up against the beach right over there. I mean that. This thing that's in the on the on the ground right over here, I was looking at that from basically right next to those those trees, and I'm thinking to myself, man, how in the world did we get over here? We must have pulled up anchor. This guy's got 150 feet of uh, road out. Road is the rope when you're talking about a an anchor ro uh, rope. Uh, I have no idea how much chain is on the end of it. If there's any, I would assume there's got to be some. But you never know, some people don't use chain. And I don't, you know, that's why I didn't want to go in the ocean with this guy. I think that he's a little uh, crazy. But the uh, wind's blowing from directly that direction, and somehow we were sideways to this and way over there by the beach. I was actually thinking I could just about jump off the boat and walk up to the beach. So I called John, who's in that boat, and said, Hey, do you think uh, we might? you know, fix this problem where I'm basically on the beach. And he said, well, give me a half an hour to finish this lesson that I'm doing and uh, then I'll come help you. And Atta, who's over in that building over there, he can look out the window from his office. It's like the third window over. He said, oh my Lord, you are right on the beach. Well, we didn't slip anchor. The anchor's still where it was, but somehow we got in a flow and it pushed us to where, okay, so the anchor's 150 feet that way, right here, you know, right out that way. So it's, this is a 40-foot boat, so it's three boat lengths out. Uh, 
So one, two, three, almost four boat lengths out in front of us. And uh, when the when whatever was going on happened, we literally slid, you know, shifted all the way around the anchor to where we were right over there, almost on the beach. It was insane. I was freaking out. I'm like, I don't want my my boat to be on the on the you know on the beach. <laughs> I, I just that doesn't sound good at all. And uh, so John was willing to help, but uh, I don't think we're going to need it. I think that we were just we were literally at the at the limit of the uh, of the swing. See, now we're swinging this way. So my boat's getting closer to the. All right. So on that video, I told you that we uh, were swinging around. The wind was blowing pretty hard. We were swinging all over the place. But you're fine, Ivy. She's barking in there for some reason. I got my heater running, and I want to let some of that Chinese diesel heater smell come out because it's still burning off the chemicals and the plastic. That, you know, the new heater smell. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm standing over here on his boat. And John, in that motorboat, comes over here. I'm like, you know, I don't know that we we need to move the anchor. Yeah, I said, you know, we, we're back out here where we're a long way from the from the anchor. See the 150 mark it's got on there. Uh, but then, uh, while he's here talking to me, this boat starts spinning around so that my boat over here is coming this way onto this onto the anchor road which is basically from the perspective of standing on the boat it looks like the road is moving this way and then it gets slack and so it, it goes under my rudder and now the it's it's this way now i've got a keel a fin keel that sticks down four feet if, it, if that road wraps around my keel, it's going to be a total mess. It's so, so difficult to get it off. And so John happened to be here tied up on this side of, of, of uh, Doug's boat. And, you know, we're just sitting here chit-chatting. And I'm just watching what's going on. And by the way, that's my diesel heater exhaust. That little circle, stainless steel circle. Um, so, uh... John fires up, he's tied to the boat, just because he's sitting here talking to me, and he fires up his boat, his, uh, he's got a little, it's a Suzuki, like, ski boat, uh, he takes people out to go windsurf, uh, windsurfing, basically, he teaches them how to windsurf, so, uh, he puts his boat into reverse and spins the, the two boats around so that the, the rope comes off and I watched it drop down so it got low enough and then it came off and I said you know what we need to do is make sure that this boat can't turn that it can't spin that it just stays in one place and doesn't ride around like this because I can't have the that road getting under my my keel it's going to be a, you know it would be horrible it'd be a, a real mess and uh, this guy isn't going to be back for two days. So, uh, this is my big 12-foot dinghy, if anybody remembers that. Picture of me and Jerry in it. So I pulled my anchor out. It's got 50 foot of chain. It's a 25-pound, uh, basically like a plow. Um, I don't remember what the brand is. Uh, it came with the boat when I bought it. Uh, so, John took this on his boat and all the chain and then as he backed out uh, I let out this uh, road that I have I've got a couple hundred feet of it and I ran it out you know I ran it out to where it was probably I don't know I'm gonna say it went out a uh, hundred feet so I got a hundred feet of rope and uh, a road and then 50 feet of chain and then my anchor and once it was on the on the bottom, I pulled in probably 25 feet until the chain and the 
the hook snagged and now my my the only way this boat can uh, can swing would be that way and it could swing because this could go slack if it went that way uh, but that line can't go under the keel since we did this which it's been about three hours I've uh, I've seen this road go slack like it's kind of slack right there right now and then it'll just tighten right back up again and the same sort of deal with the one up there in the front on my boat I've seen it go slack but it only stays slack for a couple of seconds and then it goes back to taunt so I think that we're not going to swing at all anymore we're not going to go anywhere near the the beach and uh, there's no way that his road could become wrapped around my keel he has a full keel it runs all the way from the bow all the way to the stern you're fine Ivy there's no uh, there's no break you know it's just it's a it's a nice long uh, sloping all the way to the back of the boat but it's very shallow because this boat's meant for getting close to the beach mine has a fin keel it's like this you know if it gets wrapped around it the only way we could get it off would be to uh, take his anchor road out all of it and walk it around my boat maybe but I have no idea if uh, you know then of course his the boat wouldn't be at anchor you know it'd be loose and uh, I don't know if, if that'd be easy to do at all uh, but anyway it's done uh, when I leave from him I'll put my boat in reverse we'll untie and then uh, my boat will drift this way because it's just the way the prop walk is when it's you know when it's engaged the prop walks that direction uh, and so I'll swing out and I'll just start I'll go up there to the bow and I'll start pulling on that line and uh, you know I'll pull in the all of the, the, the road and then I'll lift the chain up we're only in like six feet of water so it, you know it's not gonna I'll only be holding six feet of chain uh, at any given time until I start lifting the 25 pound anchor and then it'll be like 35 pounds total and when I get it all in and back on the boat we'll be uh, you know starting to roll off that direction and I'll uh, quickly tie the anchor off so it doesn't fall back in the water and uh, throw it in forward and we're gonna head off that direction uh, that'll be day after tomorrow um, I also was able to deposit that check by taking pictures of it. It won't actually be available at, uh, you know, at the bank until tomorrow. But uh, that means that this weekend I'll make uh, some more money and, uh, you know, working. And I should be able to get pretty close, if not successfully, make enough to... Uh, pay half of, of my uh, car debt you know to pay off my now uh, work car um, I also need to buy a set of ball joints for it so that I can replace those but they're not all that expensive I think the whole kit was like 130 bucks um, and I'll have to go up to the farm and do that uh, I doubt they would like me working on my car at the marina and then just a little while ago this guy came in and anchored right next to us and he's just on one anchor so he's swinging around all over the place uh, he keeps messing with his windmill I think there might be something wrong with it or you know but he keeps going back and messing with that windmill over and over and over again so I don't know what's up with that it's a pretty cool looking boat it's a hunter 44 it says on the side but it looks like it's kind of got a pilot house which I kind of like anyway that's where we are you can see my uh, road over there, nice and taut. This one over here, a little slack, but not bad. Oh, and uh, this morning there were some guys fishing right over there where those people are right now on the beach. They were net fishing, and when I took Ivy over to the beach and talked to them, they were uh, marine biologists. They were catching baby fish and documenting what they found and then taking temperature and water quality tests you know to see what the what the cove was like and uh, they had like four little baby halibuts a sculpin uh, some sort of a weird little goby 
a shrimp. It was pretty cool. I was pretty impressed with that. That's kind of cool. There you go, though. That's my night. I'm just going to go in and I'm actually watching sailing videos on YouTube and uh, enjoying, you know, the quiet time. Uh, I am supposed to be getting paid for this, 100 bucks a day, to sit out here. But I don't know if that's going to happen or not. We'll find out when the guy gets back. See ya. I don't know what that plane's doing, but he's really low. It looks like a military plane. He just kind of flew over the building right over here, and he was really, really low. Couldn't believe how low he was. I thought maybe he was even going to crash. Looks like he's doing okay. There's no airport up there. Can't tell if he's coming back this way or if he's still going the other way. Looks like he's going the other way. I'm not going to worry about it.